So you're welcome to the graph protocol. In this uh, lecture, I'll talk about the graph um, protocol, what it does, the summarize program, graph horizon, and then we will see how you can delegate on the network. So in the course of it, you can ask questions as we move along. So first, what's the graph protocol? The graph protocol basically brings about the density of data. So what that means is, if you want to build, for example, an application, and then your application wants to pull data from another application on the blockchain. So what you will need is to probably uh, meet that application in a way where you can get access to the APIs. And the question is, what if they get key because data? It becomes a problem. But in the sense of blockchain, they don't get keep the data, but they don't run indexes. So we need a way where these data are indexed. Now, because if you look at something like Etherscan or whatever, they index the whole blockchain. But they don't give you access to everything. They give you access to what they want you to know. But the graph changes on that. There are certain roles on the graph network. We have uh, developers who build some graphs. We have indexers who run indexing on these sub graphs. We have delegators like you and I and stickers who stick behind the sub graphs. We have curators, curators that the ones who say, oh, this sub graph is worth it. Let's put our stick and behind it. And then we have other participants in the network. So this is about the sunrise program that is currently on. The sunrise program is one of the phase in the uh, transition of the network to a decentralized network. Here, uh, the graph will provide some dedicated support, we'll talk about that later, in order to help developers transition. So here you can get access to a 100k free uh, data stream to your application. You can easily, uh, with some click, migrate your software if you're already building. And uh, there are a host of uh, benefits if you plug into this uh, Sunrise program. Now, for the Sunrise program, you can get access to, uh, anybody can participate, whether you're a developer, whether you're building some graphs or not, or maybe you're somebody who can create content, memes, articles, videos, just help with the community and uh, all manner of stuff that you can actually do. So we are currently in the Sunbeam phase, which is going to end soon, which is um, June 12. And in this Sunbeam phase, it's expected that you come on board and uh, uh, um, do your network. So there's a dedicated support. There are emails. I'll drop the email. And then there's a dedicated uh, channel on Discord for anybody who wishes to do anything. And let's talk about the, the graph horizon. So the graph horizon is a new phase that was proposed by Azad Bonds. Now, what it intends to do So, you can hear me now? Yeah. Now, so, we're talking about the, the Graph Horizon program, which we're talking about the series of changes. Ah, man, this thing will fuck me up. I don't know do this thing later. So, we're talking about the Graph uh, program and your Graph Horizon. So, one of the things is we bring it to change the dynamic of staking of the token so what that means is that right now if you stake a token you are basically providing data service to just subgraph but the graph is bringing arbitrary services things like firehose substrings nuclear languages elements files verifiable firehose all that data services so basically anything can be built using this uh, this stake token so it's bringing is a generic primitive so like I uh, put in this image, it's just like the um, again there, where you take in stick tokens, and then you bring it a, a fraction of this or generalized trust where you can build any kind of application, just like again layer. Now this is gonna this is gonna bring a cam cam of data service and models and innovation. So a lot of things that you know we imagine. So because we are extending the functionality of 
of his soul graph. Because when you stick his soul graph, and the reality took is not just providing security or as you stick to a particular soul graph, you can use it for anything. And then another change of the graph uh, horizon is there's going to be decentralized arbitration, unlike what we have in the network today. So it may mean when there is a case for maybe arbitration, rather than they bring a uh, kind of data that come and say, okay, come and mediate things like can build. Anybody can basically set up a fisherman or a verifiable uh, application system and end reward for their service. So this is a brief of the comparison of the graph today and uh, what the changes graph horizon is going to bring. So I said it's going to be a flexible sticky contract that supports uh, data services fully. Right hand, you can really do so graphs with it. The next is that um, it's a modular design, or like two days on which it's just magnetic. The next is so graphs are going to be more censorship resistant. It is not going to rely on uh, like today relying on indexing rewards. No, they're going to be secured by indexing fees. The next is I said like in the previous time, so there's going to be decentralized and configurable arbitration software for us. Or like today, governance selected uh, arbitrator. And then there is a modular design at the governance layer, and then fees, and decided upon by data services, and all that. Ask a question. Okay, now, the fire store, is it the, uh, the graph post blockchain uh, that? The fire hose. The fire store, fire store. Is it fire store, fire hose? Okay, fire hose. Yeah, uh, so the the fire hose is basically one of the services that we uh, bring to the network. So what they are doing is, you know, you can do a lot of things with data. Um, I think one of the slides I saw around the graph, um, I think they are working on is uh, bringing uh, co-processors to the network where you are extending the functionality. But right now, you take data, for example, you define the mapping of an API. You the, the build APIs using a GraphQL, and so a subgraph, and all that. And it gets ingested into the network. But what you are saying is, can we extend the functionality of, um, just like when you talk about um, AWS, for example, you can do web, web hosting, for example, you store your data, right? Mm -hmm. You can do machine learning with them. You can anything yeah. around data. So that's what uh, the graph wants to do. Whether it's uh, streaming services, they are streaming data or anything. So yeah, it's still in function. So this uh, graph, uh, graph horizon is basically one of the phase in the next evolution of uh, the graph here, yeah, like you see here, yeah, this is expanding beyond subgraphs to deliver a rich market of data services on the network. So anything around yeah. that, because what they are saying is that that's why this taking man comes in that those who are providing um, or who, who may call operators or or stakers in the network, they should be able to take their stake and get more. So let's take for example. Uh, for somebody who is selling something in a shop, the one who sells just one item and rents a shop, he's going to pay the same amount of money for that same shop at the end of the month. Yeah. Now, but the one who sells, uh, let's say, 10 things, so he's able to maximize profit because uh, he may make gain at this level, maybe because there's so much demand for that item at this particular time. Whereas, on the, yeah. on, like, on, like the one who, so that's when the um, the fire hose, the fires, the other elements, and the others are actually coming. So I hope I was able to answer. Yes, sir. Now let's talk about how you use the kit. So you go to the graph, you go to the websites, you know that. Now, but if you, like I talked about, there are few participants in the network. Say that you are an operator of the network, meaning you 
you invent some graph and you serve the data. If you don't have maybe the technical know-how or the stuff to run an indexer node, you can just like in normal networks, you can delegate 